Saturday is sponsored by AT&T Business. From the legendary Soldier Field here in Chicago, we've got a battle between two top 20 teams as 12th ranked Notre Dame takes on 18th ranked Wisconsin. Hi everybody, I'm Gus Johnson along with my quarterback Joel Klatt and welcome to Chicago folks. We've got a juicy story for you yes. today. Here it goes. Jack Cohn, the quarterback at Notre Dame, used to be the quarterback at Wisconsin. He led him to a Big Ten title game. He led him to a Rose Bowl berth. He got hurt before the season started last year. They replaced him at Wisconsin with the freshman. When Cohn came back, they stuck with the freshman. That freshman, Graham Mertz, who's now a sophomore, who's now still the starting quarterback at Wisconsin. That's right. These two young men meet each other oh. on the hollow grounds of Soldier Field today. I, Gus, I can't imagine what Jack Cohn is feeling right now, the mountain of emotion. And, and it could be overwhelming to a sense. Yeah, I think it's going to be really important for Jack Cohn to try to control the controllables, which means immerse yourself in the details of your job, because that's all you can control. On the other side, Graham Mertz, he's also in that emotional cauldron of looking across the field and seeing the guy that he's supposed to be better than. This is just dripping with drama. Mertz has got to avoid the mistakes that have plagued them in some of the big games over the course of the last nine games. Mertz, this is his 10th start, still developing young as a quarterback. If he plays clean, this Wisconsin team probably is a top 10 team. All right, history potentially in the making as well. Brian Kelly can pass Newt Rockney and become the all-time winningest coach in Notre Dame history with a win today. And for more, we go downstairs to the All-American girl, Jenny Tad. Well, Gus, you just mentioned it. And think about that for a second. Brian Kelly on the verge of becoming the winningest coach in Notre Dame history. We sat down with him just a couple days ago at Notre Dame. I asked Coach, will you be proud of this accomplishment? And I appreciated his honest answer. He said, what I'm proud of is the identity of this program. We have built consistency. We have not wavered from it. And we have brought Notre Dame back to being relevant in the college football world. But, Gus, there is another step in it is a big one right before Brian Kelly left the room he looked over at us and he said guys you know they don't give out statues very often at Notre Dame but they do for national championships and I want a statue all right Jenny thank you very much perfect day incredible fall afternoon here in the Midwest 63 degrees at kickoff time in a series that dates back to 1900 Notre Dame leads it 8-6 with two ties. The last time they met, 57 years ago, the Irish won it big, 31-7 in Era Parsegian's debut. Notre Dame won the toss and will receive Wisconsin, Notre Dame, and here we go. The ball picked up at the 5. Chris Tyree, it'll cross the 20 up to the 22-yard line. So, Jack Cohn comes on the field for the first time to face his former team and folks not only is this business it's personal i bet you can't even feel his feet right now mm. jogging onto that field hearing the reception from both his home crowd and his former home crowd home last week against purdue 15 of 30 233 yards Two touchdowns, he was sacked four times. On first down, and Notre Dame on the ground. Kyron Williams with the run over the right side. Isaiah Mullins with the tackle, a gain of two. Let's take a look at the Notre Dame offense. This offensive line is banged up. They're on their third offensive tackle over on the left side. That's Tosh Baker, something to look for in pass protection. On the outside, very skilled. Michael Mayer is one of the best, if not the best tight ends in all of college football. He needs the ball about 10, 12 times today. Second down and eight. Cohn to throw for the first time. Under pressure and sack. Great pressure, and this is Matt Henningsen, the senior, 
We told you about the offensive line struggles for Notre Dame. Let's take a look at the Wisconsin defense. And this defensive line will have opportunities. You saw it right there against that left tackle. Henningsen gets the sack. Nick Herbig, the outside linebacker. Watch out for him. He's developing. He's very good. Fayon Hicks in the lineup. Was injured. Missed Eastern Michigan. Back in for the Badgers. A loss of seven. Cone steps up in the pocket and batted down. Almost picked off. Wow. Scott Nelson, the senior from Detroit. Knocks it down, and Notre Dame three and out. So Cohen doesn't see him as he comes back. As soon as he plants and throws, he feels like he's got a crossing route right there, but Nelson just steps right in front of it, playing super heavy downhill football from that safety position. I think Notre Dame's going to have to go over the top here early in this game because clearly those safeties wanted to play down and heavy football even in the passing game. Jay Bramblett will punt it away inside his own five. Jack Dunn back deep. And it's fielded at midfield by Dean Ingram. And Ingram will get inside Notre Dame territory. A 34-yard punt and a six-yard return. So here comes Graham Mertz, a four-star prospect out of Overland Park, Kansas. As you take a look at his numbers, he's made some mistakes this season and has not thrown a touchdown. Well, and, and he just got to settle down and, and play to his talent level and get back to the details that would make you a quality quarterback. And remember, Gus, this is only his 10th start, so he is fairly young still here in this process of developing as a quarterback. After an off week last week, I expect him to play much better today. First down and 10. At the 45, here's Mertz. Throwing off first down, and he has his receiver on the far side. Kendrick Pryor with the yards after the catch as he plows his way down close to the 20. A 23-yard gain offensively for Wisconsin. Let's take a look. Very experienced, big and physical up front, exactly what you would expect from the Wisconsin Badgers. At the skill position, they're also very experienced on the outside. Kendrick Pryor, Danny Davis, older guys as wide receivers, but their best player is Jake Ferguson, the tight end. They target him a bunch. First down and 10, opening series for Wisconsin at the Notre Dame 23. And here's Chez Malusi running over the right side. Malusi, the Clemson transfer, is off to a terrific start to the season against Eastern Michigan. 20 carries, 144 yards, and a touchdown defensively for the Fighting Irish. This Irish team is going through a philosophy change. Of course, Marcus Freeman comes over from Cincinnati, and now they're trying to change up what they do defensively towards something that's more of a go-go-go attacking style. You know who benefits from that? Maybe the best player in America at times, Kyle Hamilton, the safety. He is amazing to watch 14 to safe on second and seven Malusi again picking his way forward and he'll gain a yard well this is where Hamilton's got to be great I just told you I think he's one of the best players out there thus I think he's probably a top six five pick in next spring's NFL draft but here's where he has to be great because Wisconsin wants to target Jake Ferguson, the tight end. The matchup will be against Kyle Hamilton, 6'4", 220. Let's see where he goes here. Third down and six at the 19. Mertz to throw it. Mertz winds up and incomplete. Guess who he was going for? Jake Ferguson. And right there in his hip pocket, Kyle Hamilton. This is a good route. This is the route they're going to fake out in the flat. Okay, they're trying to get the defense to play heavy outside leverage. Hamilton does, but watch him make up and then his length to get back and defend that ball. A bit out in front of Ferguson. Tough for him to catch that anyways, but Hamilton right there making it difficult. Colin Larsh comes in to attempt the field goal, a 37-yarder. He was two for two against Eastern Michigan, including a 39-yarder two weeks ago. And good. Wisconsin strikes first. They'll settle for the three points against Notre Dame. Time now for progressive game flow. Keys to the game sponsored by Under Armour. The only way is 
through for Notre Dame. They've got to win in the downfield passing game, get away from that front seven of Wisconsin's defense. And for Wisconsin, it's about capitalizing in the red zone. Now, that last third down play technically was in the red zone, but we're talking about those trips inside the 15, inside the 10 yard line that have really hampered them over the course of their first two games. Jack Van Dyke will send it away. Chris Tyree back for Notre Dame. And Tyree will get a shot. Kyrie crosses the 15 and gets up to the 20 before being stopped. Let's go downstairs to Jenny. Gus, I talked to both these quarterbacks this week, and trust me, I tried to find the drama between the two, but the reality is it just wasn't there. There's so much respect. They even texted with each other this week, said good luck. We'll catch up after the game. For Graham Mertz, he said Jack is a great guy, great person. I have a lot of respect for him. And what Jack said was really interesting. Wisconsin, those players, we've gone through blood, sweat, tears together. They're my brothers for life, but make no mistake, I want to win this game. All right, Jenny, thank you. Notre Dame three and out on their first opportunity. Cone looking in trouble again. Sack for the second time. Wow. Henningsen in on the play. Keanu Benton as well. And Jim Leonard is dialing it up. Well, and, and this is typical Jim Leonard. It looks like they're blitzing somebody, but really they're only rushing four. And they get in there. Benton is a guy that they've been expecting big things from ever since he was a freshman. And they feel like he can be a dominant force in the middle of that defensive line. A loss of seven. Second and 17 at the 13-yard line. Notre Dame undefeated, 3-0, and Wisconsin 1-1, one and one. Cone empty backfield, slings it, and caught for first down, Avery Davis. And that's a gain of 20. He's got this space out in the middle of the field, watches Cone, anticipates the throw. Davis gets over the linebacker, he's got to throw that in front of the safety, but over the linebacker. Gus, we call that layering the ball. Beautiful throw from Jack Cone, his best of the day. Last week against Purdue, Avery Davis, five catches, 120 yards, and a touchdown. First down and 10 of the 33. Kyron Williams, play fair. Here's Cone, guns it underneath. That one thrown behind his intended receiver, Kevin Austin Jr. And Kevin Austin is a guy they've got to get going. 6'2", 215, he's dynamic with the ball in his hands after the catch, but he struggled last week, didn't have a catch against Purdue. Some mistiming things, a couple of drops, and there, can't connect on a ball he probably should have caught. Brings up second and 10 at the 33, second series for the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. And thus, this is going to be an air game for Notre Dame. Not much room in the run game. Cone's going to have to throw this 40, 45 times for them today. Here's Cone to throw it again over the middle this time and caught by Michael Mayer, one of the most talented tight ends in the country. They're going to have to move him around and make sure that Jim Leonard, the defensive coordinator for Wisconsin, who's very good, one of the best in America, doesn't get a beat on where he's lining up. So he's got to be in motion. He's got to get moved around for plays like this on a third down. Third down and five for the Irish. Cone looking sideline caught first down Notre Dame Kevin Austin what you're gonna get here is as Mayer comes out they're gonna get a double team out of the linebackers watch they both look him up Cone wants to go there then he takes the one-on-one -on, -one on the backside beautiful job by Notre Dame there Jack Cone starting to find a rhythm in the passing and you can see he's not panicking even though they've had some pressure on him early Sixth play of the drive right here. First down after the seven-yard pickup at the 45. Play fake. Cone sets deep. Going for it all. Down the field and incomplete. Braden Lindsey. The target. Caesar Williams running stride for stride. Cone put too much on it. Williams, the corner. He's a guy that Jim Leonard went out of his way. To compliment said he has been so good for us very solid. He said he's a veteran I really trust Caesar Williams in there in a one-on-one -on -one matchup He's able to get it done Williams a senior from Grand Prairie, Texas second down and ten Gotta snap it. Yeah, he needs a timeout 
Three to nothing, Wisconsin. Timeout, Notre Dame. We'll step away. Today is sponsored by AT&T Business, keeping your business connected with AT&T 5G. And by Bear Dynasty, everything you want in the paint, now all in one can. Well, folks, the Windy City has become the Wendy City. Check out our live tailgate sponsored by Wendy's, CFB on Fox on Twitter, for the duration of Notre Dame and Wisconsin. Seventh play of the drive coming up. First six plays of this drive, all passes. Second down and 10 at the 45. Kyron Williams in the backfield. Cone, sideline, back shoulder throw on the money. Joe Wilkins, Jr. That was a beautiful adjustment by Wilkins. And an equally good ball by Jack Cone. Watch this route. You got defenders over the top. So Cone reads the leverage and just goes, drives the ball onto the back shoulder before the safety gets over the top. Wilkins gets a nice conversion there, and they move the chains. Beautiful series here and rhythm from Cone and the Irish. Gain of 18, first and 10. Inside Wisconsin territory. Cone, play fake, sets up, sideline. And it is caught. Lindsay again, now Jack Cone starting to spread it around a little bit. And you see where it's at, Gus. Where is it? Outside the numbers. Wisconsin loves to play one safety in the middle of the field. It's middle close. That's what Jim Leonard wants to do. He wants to put more guys in the run box. Well, what that does is it leaves those corners on an island. They have deep responsibility. You can throw underneath that all day long, Gus. It's called free access. Gain of 16, first and 10 at the Wisconsin 21. Cone hands it off this, this time. Williams with space. All of a sudden, Notre Dame catching this Wisconsin team off balance. That's a six-yard pickup for Williams. And what they've had to do is get that passing game going. Brian Kelly knew it. He told us in the meeting, listen, Jack Cone's going to have to be brilliant. We're going to have to throw it a bunch against this defensive front. And the only way they're, they're going to be able to sustain a run game is if they can throw it first and soften up that defense. Second down and four yards to go at the Wisconsin 15 for Notre Dame. Williams the pistol back behind Cone. Williams, and he is bottled up and taken down immediately. Bryson Williams, first contact, and that's a loss of one. Williams' helmet popped off. He has to run of the game for one play because his helmet came off. Third down. Well, this is this is that money down. I know they, they love Michael Mayer, 87. He's going to come back onto the field. But also, what you have to understand is that if you get that free throw outside, Gus, you can't be bored with it. They're going to split now Mayer down here to the bottom side of the frame. And they're going to match up with a safety on him. That's a good matchup for Notre Dame. 11th play of the drive. Cone. Sideline. And they call it a catch. Michael Mayer. Got a foot in bounds. Controlled the ball as he... Hit the sideline. What I love about what Notre Dame does from Tommy Reese, their play caller, and Brian Kelly philosophically, is it's about players, not plays. They don't look and say, hey, look how smart I am with this play design. They say, I'm going to throw it to my Joes because they're better than your X's and O's. Ooh. And Michael Mayer gets his feet inbounds. Beautiful throw catch and conversion for the Irish. First down, Notre Dame. And here's Williams looking for a crease and won't find it. Did that ball pop out? I think it did, but he recovered. Boy, he, he had a costly fumble in that Toledo game a couple of weeks ago. I don't have to let the Notre Dame fans know about that. Toledo would go down and actually take a lead in that game before Cone dropped. Notre Dame right back down the field to win the game. That ball was definitely out. They get a fortuitous bounce back to Williams, who was able to recover. Wisconsin has not given up a single point in the first half this year. Second down and goal. He's got a good matchup again with Mayer on the top side. From the 13, they'll hand it off. Chris Tyree this time. And 
Wisconsin not giving up much. Johnson with the tackle, number 56, the sophomore out of Columbus, Ohio. I'm surprised with how, how good of a rhythm we saw from Cone during this series. I'm surprised they just opened that set of downs with two run plays. It's going to be so tough to run against this Wisconsin team. And now they force themselves into this long third down scenario. Third down and goal. Here's Cone looking. Cone reverses, loses his footing, and goes down to the 22. Pressure, and even more pressure coming from this Wisconsin defense. A loss of nine, third sack of the first quarter for the Badgers. But again, they run it on first and second, and now you're in an obvious passing situation. They can play coverage back there with a couple of safeties deep, and he actually just trips over his right tackle, Josh Lug, number 75, Jimmy Leonard. He's loving it over there. Jonathan Dora comes in to attempt a 39-yarder. And he missed it. Irish come up empty. Wisconsin holds. Badgers up 3-0 with the ball after this. Wisconsin came in 1964, and it was Eric Parsegian's first game as the head coach of the Irish coming from Northwestern. Notre Dame would win the game handily, and Parsegian would go on to win 95 games and two national titles with the Irish in 66 and 73. First down and 10 of the 21 for the Badgers. Malusi and Malusi ambushed and ridden down. Howard across the third, jumping on his back. And that's a loss of three. And brings up an obvious passing situation. You know, we've talked about the pressure and the emotions for Jack Cohn, but I've, I've, there's got to be a lot of emotions for Graham Mertz. Here's a guy who came out gangbusters against Illinois, but he struggled against ranked opponents. 0-4, only one touchdown responsible for, and 10 turnovers. He's got to play cleaner in these big games. He knows it, and here's an opportunity for an obvious passing situation. On second and 13 at the 18, Mertz dancing. Mertz just lets it go, throws it at the feet of Ferguson, and incomplete. Good pressure. Riley Mills in the backfield. I think a lot of Notre Dame fans were wondering, hey, you know, is this defense really going to be better under Marcus Freeman after the first week against Florida State? But trust me, folks, you watch the film, they've gotten better and better every week. And I feel like Marcus Freeman is cracking the code of his players. What do they do best? One of them, Gus, is Isaiah Foskey, number seven, a great pass rusher. Here's a down where he could maybe get loose here near side defensive end. Third down and 13 at the 18-yard line. Mertz out of the gun, setting up a screen. Mertz floats it in space, incomplete. And Notre Dame will get off the field, bringing more pressure. And that's something that was a little bit different than week one. And great recognition, by the way. You're going to get a loop around here from Foskey. He's trying to get into the middle, but then he sees something is up, and he's going to follow the tight end. Guess who else was right there? Kyle Hamilton. Dude, I'm telling you. There's something. You know this about me. Like, I'll see guys on tape, and I come in, and I'm like, dude, they, we got a dude today. <laughs> Kyle Hamilton is one of those dudes. So Wisconsin punting deep in their own territory. Williams, the deep man for Notre Dame. Let's it take a bounce, picks it up, tight ropes the sideline, and steps out of play. So coming up after the 48-yard punt and the 7-yard return, Jack Cohn again, and the Notre Dame offense. Big Noon Saturday is sponsored by Pacific Life. More than 150 years strong. Protect what matters most. Today's game is featured on the free-to-play Fox Bet Super 6 app. One of the questions in the Big Noon contest is, which team will have the most total offensive yards and how many will they have, Notre Dame or Wisconsin? There are chances to win all season long. Fighting Irish take over with pretty good field position. First down at the 41. Davis in motion, Cone out of the shotgun. Cone to throw to the sideline, incomplete. 
Davis, the intended receiver, but partner, I tell you, when you look at this Wisconsin D-line, 92, 95, and 99, you just get the feeling that they think barbecue is in the backfield, <laughs> and they're trying to get there. <laughs> And they weren't invited. Their feelings are hurt. <laughs> That's right. You know, and, and they'll rotate as well. You know, Bryson Williams, number 91, he's a good player for this, for them. Rodas Johnson, 56. And that keeps those frontline guys, those starters, fresh throughout the day. Second down and 10 of the 41. Cole guns it underneath, incomplete. Michael Mayer, the intended receiver. Now, Cole, Joel, suffered a dislocated finger against Toledo couple of games back do you think that's still affecting him I, on his throwing hand I, I don't if there was any remnants of swelling it would have been last week against Purdue I, I'm sure this far out he's feeling fine third down and ten Notre Dame two of four on third down conversions here in the first quarter Cone looking sideline nice throw Davis with the catch, but not enough for first down. Dean Ingram with a nice tackle in the open field for a gain of three for the Fighting Irish. Dean Ingram got a lot of playing time last week, in their last game, I should say, before the off week, because Fayon Hicks, the starting corner, was out with a men meniscus injury. Those reps have really paid off, and the Irish unable to take over, or excuse me, take advantage, Gus, of that good field position. Jay Bramblett. Will punt it away from the 29. Dean Ingram, Jack Dunn, the deep men for Wisconsin. And Bramblett drives it to the 16. Ingram tiptoes out of bounds around the 23. 40-yard punt, 7-yard return. Tonight, two great college football games go back-to-back -back on FS1. First, Nebraska faces 20th ranked Michigan State at 7 p.m. Then the Pac-12 lights up the night as Oregon State takes on USC at 10.30 Eastern. You can catch all the action on FS1 and the Fox Sports app. How about Michigan State? They go down to Miami, rough up the Hurricanes. Mel Tucker's got those young men looking rugged. Yeah, he, and he's done such a good job in particular in the run game. Kenneth Walker, leading the rusher for them and done it just a heck of a job. Mertz on first down, steps up in the pocket, shovels it forward to Malusi. And Malusi pick up four. JT Bertrand with the tackle. Well, you can see that this defense, they, they are getting aggressive. Wonderful view from the ump, ump cam. Watches Mertz just has to kind of shovel that up forward to Malusi. Fortunate that that ball wasn't knocked out. Look how close that was to falling out of his hands, and it ends up being positive yards. Second down and six at the 27. Malusi with single setback. Play fit. Mertz, short roll, sets up, backs it up, and caught. Wow, Clay Cundiff. And Graham Mertz puts it on a dime, 42-yard strike. Pundit was on this right side, and watch as he's just going to get in the middle, and he's going to take off up the field. Mertz wanted it. He has to set up just on that soft roll as if he's going to boot all the way out. He stops, goes right down the field. How about the over-the-shoulder catch? Beautiful catch from Pundit. A gain of 43. Wisconsin in business now. First down at the Notre Dame 30. Malusi with a lane. And he'll go down inside the 25. Well, Clarence Lewis with the tackle. I've been impressed with Malusi, haven't you? Yes, I have. We saw him week one. And you could see in that game he was just getting his feet wet. The transfer from Clemson. Learning this style of run game for Wisconsin. And as these games have gone on, he's gotten better and better. Each of his first two were 100-yard games. Six-yard run for Malusi. Second down and four at the 24. They give it to him again. Straight ahead. Not as much this time. Now Malusi played behind Travis Etienne, the first round pick from the Jaguars at Clips in the last two years. And he probably would have been in somewhat of a rotation 
at Clemson if he would have stay, stayed. And when we talked to him before that Penn State game, he said, listen, I'm going to bet on myself. And I want to go be a featured back. Where do you do that? You go that, you go to a place where they feature running backs who came to Wisconsin. He leaves the field. Third down here. And this looks like big boys full back in the game. Isaac Garendo, the deep man. Merch sprints out of the pocket. Throws. And it's caught on the sideline. And it's Kendrick Pryor. He needed three, but he got two. I think they're going to stay on the field here and go for it on fourth down. You know, Pryor was open for a first down right away. Watch as he runs this route. If Merch comes out and throws this on time, it's a first down Wisconsin right now. He's open. He's open. He's open. And he waits and throws it. He goes back behind the chains. And now we got fourth down. Fourth down and one from the 21. Chanel Malusi out of the eye. Malusi. I don't know. It's going to be close. Jacoby Lacey, first man to him. And I don't think he got it. He did not. On fourth and one, the Notre Dame defense stifles Wisconsin. I tell you, 95 2. Myron Tagovailoa Mosa was in there. Check out 95. He's going to go big boy football. Gets off of the block, and then he's the one in there stuffed in that pile. Great stop for Notre Dame, and the short yardage woes continue for Wisconsin. They have not been great in short yardage for a historically great running team. They have not had much success in those short yardage opportunities. Coach Kelly giving his defensive coordinator a high five. First down, Notre Dame. And they're on 21. Delayed handoff, Williams. We'll get back to the line of scrimmage. Jack Sanborn with the tackle. And that'll take us to the end of the first quarter, just as we expected, folks. Low-scoring affair. Three to nothing. Wisconsin here in Chicago. Big Noon Saturday is sponsored by AT&T Business. And welcome back to Soldier Field, Wisconsin, the Notre Dame. Three-zip Badger so far. And there's the commish, Kevin Warren on the left, and the godfather, Gary Alvarez, former head coach at Wisconsin and athletic director. Cone throwing in trouble again. He's been sacked three times, wants to run it, and Cone this time picks up seven and a half, maybe eight yards. And that's the thing about Jack Cone that's deceiving. Remember, he was a sensational lacrosse player coming out of Long Island, New York. He can run the football. In fact, committed to Notre Dame to play lacrosse. So I guess in a way, this is full circle as he finishes his college football career here at Notre Dame. But you're right, and Sanborn had him dead to rights, and he slipped out and creates an easier third down. You wonder how this game could change if Cole started to really run it. Third down and two. He fumbles a snap. Picked it up and completes it. And it's a first down. Kevin Austin with a six-yard reception. And he's stopped by Scotty Nelson. I mean, he almost fumbled that snap. And they still get the conversion. That shotgun snap actually went through his hands, hit him in the stomach. He was able to get a grip on that football and deliver it to Austin for the first down. First down and 10 of the 35. Cone. Hansen. Cone steps up. There he goes. Breaks it back and goes down at the 41. Jack Cohn will pick up six. Leo Chanel back after missing the first two because of COVID with the tackle. You know, what, what's important, and, and listen, a guy like Cohn, he's not going to take over the game with his feet, but it's important when your offense breaks down on the offensive line that you buy some time, move the chains, make a, a negative play, a positive play, just like you saw in that last snap. Second and four at the 41, Cohn near side. And it's another completion this time. Great Lindsay in front of Fayon Hicks. A seven-yard pickup. This is where I would live if I was Notre Dame. 
because I talked about it before, those free access throws. When the corners have deep responsibility, just throw it underneath them. And, and for Tommy Reese, the play caller, and Jack Cohn, the quarterback, the key here is don't get bored with the simple thing that can work. First down of the 48. Cohn steps up, fires down the field deep. He's got a man incomplete. Lindsey, the target, but Fayon Hicks made up some ground when the ball was in the air. If Cohn leads him, it's a touchdown. If he throws it across the middle of the field, out in front, it's a touchdown. The only reason Hicks contacts is because he's got to stop. Lindsey has to stop. Probably contact before. Probably could have seen a flag, but Jack Cohn's got to get that ball out in front of his wide receiver. It would have been six points. Zero penalties in this game so far. Second and ten. Cohn again to throw. Scrambles out of the pocket and just dumps it out of bounds. Cone's been sacked 45 times in his career, so anytime he can turn pressure into a positive is a gain. It's huge. Brings up third and long. Jack Sanborn with pressure. Yeah, and, and the key there is just avoid the negative yard plays and, and live to snap it another down. Here on third and ten, they got to protect him. From the 48. Badgers showing blitz. Best pass rusher they have, pure pass rusher, is Nick Herbig. Going out of the gun. Over the middle. And it's caught. I don't know if it's enough. Michael Mayer looks like he's a little short. But it gives you the field position and the yardage to potentially go for it. It looks like they will. They'll bring on two extra tight ends, now three of them in the game, and they'll go for it here on a fourth down. Notre Dame two for four on fourth downs this year. They need a yard. Williams the deep man. Play clock winding down. All show, no goal for Notre Dame. Wisconsin didn't flinch. Here comes a punt team for the Irish. Big News Saturday is sponsored by Discover, the official card of the Big Ten Conference. And by Dr. Pepper, delicious ice-cold Dr. Pepper, the one fans deserve. Notre Dame trailing three to nothing to Wisconsin with a big fourth down coming up and they send the first team offense back on the field looks like they will go for it. Fourth down and about a yard and a half. Michael Mayer split out wide to the right side. Remember, Cohn is a capable runner. And there's a flag on the field. Sideline warning, Notre Dame bench. There's no yardage penalty that goes with that warning. Fourth down. Really, man, on a fourth down? Can't just let him snap it? If that happens again, the warning becomes a five-yard penalty. Fourth down at a yard and a half. Kyron Williams in the backfield with Cole. They give it to Williams, looking for the first down, and he has it. Henningsen with the tackle. And some good blocking on that right side on the old line. Yeah, how about Patterson, the center? Look at the block that he's going to get right there on the nose guard. That's a terrific play. And getting some movement on that defensive line is an important part of this early game for Notre Dame. That's a big conversion there. Now nine plays, 38 yards on this series. Jared Patterson, the center senior from Laguna Hills, California. First down and 10 of the 41. Austin in motion. 
Williams. And getting inside the 40 for a pickup of two. Leo Chanel with the tackle there. He's back in the lineup. This is his first game of the year for Wisconsin. Really good middle linebacker, and he is a big one. 6'2", 260 pounds. Flies around, an emotional player. They feel like he is going to bring them even more toughness and physicality in that front seven. Second down, eight yards to go. Kyron Williams, the running back, lines up as a wide receiver at the top of your screen. It's a good matchup for Notre Dame, Gus. Cone looks to his left. Underneath, he's got the big fella, Michael Mayer. Scott Nelson, the safety with the tackle. Like it's just short of that first down. Soft coverage. Throw it underneath. Good ball from Cone. But now they've got to convert. Third down and one. From the Wisconsin 32. Quarterback sneak. First down, Notre Dame. You know, Gus, that's one of my favorite plays in football. Quarterback sneak on third down, specifically. Mm. Just move the chains. We've already seen, you know, Wisconsin drove down. They're inside the 30-yard line. It's third down. They're in a little sprint out. Mertz doesn't throw the ball on time. Then they don't get it on fourth down. They don't get any points. A new set of downs is so important, and they steal one right there. 13th play of the drive. In trouble. Wings it. Incomplete. Lindsay. Would have been a tough catch, but a makeable. He's trying to come right back at that ball, and it hit him a bit low, but probably should have made the catch as Cone again has to buy time and avoid that rush for Wisconsin. Wisconsin is, is having some problems dealing with that empty formation when Kyron Williams gets out of the backfield. There was some confusion there with the linebackers. I, I suspect that Notre Dame will get back to that soon. Second and ten. Cone, here's a screen. Incomplete. More pressure. Mayer, the target. But Fayon Hicks was in the backfield, staring right in the face of the quarterback. And that will bring up third and ten. Notre Dame had a 15-play drive earlier that ended with a missed field goal. Third down and 10. They need to go to the 20 for first down. Trips at the top of your screen. Cone avoids the rush. But does he? No, he doesn't. Goes down for the fourth time in the first half. Jack Cone gobbled up again this time. C.J. Getz. He's probably got a a Avery Davis. Watch as Davis is going to come in, and he's going to be hooking right around this linebacker right there. That's where the ball probably needs to come out. His eyes had left that zone, and he takes a sack, making this a much tougher kick. Jonathan Dora into attempt. His second field goal. He missed the 41-yarder. This one from 51 yards away. And he nails it. Just back him up. Like you're too close to first. Like a great three-point shooter. Don't give it to me at 15 feet. Give it to me at 25. <laughs> Door, big-time kick. Notre Dame, Wisconsin. Level at three and a flag thrown late on the play Cam Hart broke it up Kendrick Pryor the intended receiver also a flag in the backfield
There are two fouls on the play. Pass interference, defense number five. That penalty's declined. Personal foul, roughing the quarterback. Defense number 14, low hit. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. What, what you're going to get here is Kyle Hamilton is coming on a blitz, and he comes free, and he, when he tries to pull up, he hits Mertz at the knee or below when he's in his passing posture. The flag immediately comes out, and Wisconsin is in business here. First down. It's hard, man. These defenders can't hit him low, can't hit him high. It's just drill him in the chest, I guess. You know, just... It is getting complicated. First penalty of the game for either team. From the 41, Mertz. Incomplete. Jalen Berger, the red shirt freshman from Don Bosco Prep in Newark, New Jersey. Getting more playing time now, the intended receiver. Really talented player. A lot of Wisconsin fans thought that Berger was going to be the featured back before Malusi came in and kind of stole that job and won that job, I guess I should say, in fall camp. But here, Berger's getting an opportunity. Berger ran for 62 yards against Eastern Michigan in his first action of the season a couple of weeks ago. Second and 10. Mertz, that ball may have been deflected in the backfield. Incomplete. Prior, the intended receiver. It looked like Jack Kaiser may have gotten a hand on this. Watch 24 from Notre Dame. Does he get a bit of that ball? If he does, it's ever so slight. And another big third down here. Notre Dame's defense doing a heck of a job so far. Third down. Ten yards to go. Isaac Garendo back in the game and running back. From the 41, Mertz, underneath, intercepted. Cam Hart dug it out. And we've got our first turnover of the game. That's the exact same route that he was just called for a pass interference. And he sees it. He sees the formation, the split from the wide receiver. Watch him break on this ball. He sticks his back foot in the ground, and he goes. No hesitation. Beautiful play from Cam Hart. Interception, Irish. Notre Dame has it at the 50. Back in Chicago, 3-3 game. Coming up on the State Farm Halftime Report. We'll check in on number two, Georgia. They try to avoid the upset in Nash Vegas. Penn State could become the first Big Ten team to go to 4-0 this season. And Minnesota, they look for their third straight win. But here in Chicago, Clatter, it's all about how Notre Dame will react after forcing that turnover right now. That's the absolute truth. Taking advantage of opportunities, Rob. And Cam Hart gives you the ball. Beautiful play. And now it's up to Jack Cohn in this offense drive down the field. Cam Hart, sophomore from Baltimore, Maryland. Notre Dame starts at their own 49. Quick pass. Mayer had to go up high. Couldn't make the catch. Makes up second and ten. I think at, at some point Notre Dame is going to have to start getting creative with ways to get Kyron Williams and even Chris Tyree, their two running backs, some touches. It's pretty clear that the run game's not going to be great today. So how do you let them affect the game getting touches? Second and ten. Tyree, number 25. In the backfield. Cone. Over the middle. Chanel out of bounds, but a flag on the play at the 47. Noah Burks was in coverage. Trying to get the ball to the back. Chris Tyree. It's like I was talking about on a little angle route where you're trying to get just inside of that linebacker. And I interference defense number five the spot foul automatic first down I think they got the wrong linebacker because fives 
in the middle of the field. There, there's five, and, and he doesn't really touch anybody, which he doesn't. They're calling this on Noah Burks, number 41, who was in coverage on Tyree, and they feel like he got over the back, holding on that back shoulder, which was what allowed him to get over the top and bat that ball away. But that is a huge break for the Irish. So first down, Notre Dame. Now inside, Wisconsin territory. They'll hand it off, Tyree with room. And it'll fall down around the 42. Piano Benton with the tackle after a five yard pickup. Yeah, that's some nice positive yards there in the run game. And they knew that they would have to try to keep Wisconsin honest with that run game. And then they would go back to the passing attack with their quarterback. Second and five. Cone survey. Dumps it down. Tyree turns it up. And he has the first down. Okay, that's a brilliant job by Cone. He wants to go left his backside after that little play fake in the backfield. But it wasn't there. Watch his eyes go to the left side of the field. He gets a little play fake, and then he goes, he wants to throw a slant, but he's got a linebacker right in his vision. So then he's got to get himself outside of the pocket, find a check down, and he gets positive yardage. It's a broken play that he still gets a conversion out of. First down at the Badger 37. Jack Cole. Sideline. Nice throw. He's a better catch. Mayer laying out. This kid 6'4, 251. Six yard reception. He had a career best nine catches for 120 yards and a touchdown in the season opener on the road at Florida State. Well, that, Purdue had two guys on him last week <laughs> the entire time, right? So he only got one catch last week. Second and four from the 31. Austin in motion. I snap and flag. There you go. Come on. Snap infraction. Offense number 55. Five yard penalty. Second down. Mike Cannon, your referee today. And 55 is the center, Jarrett Patterson. Really the, the only returning starter. There's that little flinch. He kind of half snaps before going back. There's from the ump cam. That's the official that threw the flag. Second and nine. And that time is a factor. If they deem him to be a ball carrier, catch control now a couple of steps, now all he has to do is cross the play to the goal line. That play is under further review. This is a big one here. This is going to get very technical because of that point, which is hard to determine, Gus, of when he's a runner and when he's still completing the process of the catch. And... For all the technicalities, let's go to our expert, Mikey Rule Books in Los Angeles. Mike Pereira, what do you think about this one? This is a big one. Yeah, you know, I go to the ABC. So did he have control first? Yes. Did he have a foot down? Yes. And then is there that element of time? And you see there is control and there's multiple steps. And I think he breaks the plane before the ball actually gets uh, pulled out from him. So. Ruling on the field, touchdown. I don't see anything in my mind that you, you could use to overturn that. 
Mike, this is, I mean, th this is one of those nightmare scenarios, right? I mean, because the element of time is so difficult to officiate. Field is confirmed. Touchdown. So they confirm it. Thank you, Mike. We'll check in with you later. Partner, that's a big-time throw and a big-time catch. Yeah, you bet. And they needed that from Kevin Austin, who, again, last week didn't have a catch. And they needed to get him going. They got him a couple of easy ones early, and then that was a sensational grab, battling with Fayon Hicks. Gore in to attempt the extra point. And it's good. 10-3, Notre Dame. Jack Cohn against his former team. He calls the Badgers his brothers. Right now, he's trying to beat the brakes off of them. The Dr. Pepper tuition giveaway is back with over $650,000 in tuition support entered before October 13th. Jack Cohn with his ninth touchdown pass of the year. Austin's second TD catch of the season. Got it going there. Throwing the rock. Five plays, 51 yards. But remember, that was set up by that great interception by Cam Hart. Took the ball away, created an extra possession, and that's exactly what Brian Kelly was after when he hired Marcus Freeman, the defensive coordinator for Notre Dame, is a defense that could steal possessions, and there, they pay it off. Gore will send it away. Devin Chandler, the deep man, for the Badgers. Chandler from the eight. Chandler with a lane. Chandler inside Notre Dame territory, but there is a flag at the 41. Some costly penalties on Wisconsin so far. Remember, there was an interception negated. Illegal block in the back. Receiving team, number 55. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down, Wisconsin. That'll wipe out a 48-yard return. Let's check in with Jenny Taft. Well, some big goals for Kevin Austin Jr. for Notre Dame this season. What a play for the receiver. And yeah, Joel, you mentioned it before the break. He did have a down week last week. But according to offensive coordinator Tommy Reese, he said he's got some magic. He had a great week of practice, great two first weeks of this season. And for Austin, he's dealt with injuries. He's never felt like he's been able to give it 100%. He is motivated by that and leaving his mark on this Notre Dame offense. All right, Jenny, thank you very much. Austin from... Fort Lauderdale, Florida. First down for Mertz at the 31. And they'll hand it off to Malusi. And Malusi stopped by Isaiah Foskey after a five-yard game. Badgers have got to get to the run game. They've got to establish that run game. They cannot get into a, a passing game against Notre Dame and hold up. This offense has got to own the line of scrimmage. Only 14 rushing yards is not going to get it done. Second and five. Play fake. Short roll. And Mertz will just throw it at the feet of John Chanel. I know you want him to run the football more, but from where I'm sitting, partner, Graham Mertz has to play better. Well, certainly, but part of that is giving him the element of the play-action pass. You know, and we see that. They're just not respecting those run fakes because they haven't run it effectively yet. And you get people open in the back end by running it effectively first. These obvious passing situations are an area that are very difficult for a quarterback. And yes, he's got to step up and make a play here. Third down and five there. 0 for 4 on third down conversions. Charge timeout. Wisconsin, their first. This will be a 30-second timeout. Don't forget, you can find all of Joel's Breaking the Huddle content, including his weekly top 10, at foxsports.com, the Fox Sports app, and CFB on Fox social platforms. Third and five. At the 36. Mertz. 
Winds up, and he's got a receiver incomplete. Wide open. DK had two steps on the defender. And Graham Mertz overthrows him. Th this has got to be thrown better. DK runs a great route. Look at the separation he gets. And this ball just flies way over his head and out of bounds. There's just no way you can get that. That, that ball's got to be thrown in bounds. That's a detail from the quarterback. We've already seen Mertz now make a few mistakes today. That's an open receiver that he's got to hit. Bunovic punting from the 21. Kyron Williams standing at his own 20. Booming kick. Field at 19. Williams makes a couple of guys miss. Finally tripped up as he crosses the 20 by John Chanel on special teams. A 46-yard punt and a four-yard return. So the big question, did Paul Chris make the right decision? Choosing Graham Mertz over Jack Cohn. Hmm. A lot of Badger fans were waiting for Mertz. He was the highly recruited player. He came out and played unbelievable against Illinois in that first game a year ago. And even though he, he struggled at times down the stretch, there was a feeling that he was the future. Cohn found himself a spot to play at Notre Dame. Perfect fit, as Brian Kelly says it. Cohn to throw it on first down. Cohn winds up deep. Ball! Incomplete. Lindsay has it knocked out of his hands. Fayon Hicks doing a great job. Today gave up a touchdown, but it was a tough one to Austin. I tell you, you know, they talk about quarterbacks having to have short memories. How about cornerbacks? You know, Hicks was beat on the last series for a touchdown. He comes right back. Beautiful defensive play, batting that ball away. Second and ten. Williams trying to get outside, and he's tripped up. Jack Sanborn, I tell you, this young man, the senior from Deer Park, Illinois, has been balling out early in this season. There's no doubt. They were so good against Penn State. Didn't really give anything up in that front seven. A couple of big plays stung them. Now they've got another chance here on a third down. Got to get off the field. Third and 11. Empty backfield. I just think they've got a great matchup, Notre Dame does right now, with Mayer. Mayer is basically lined up right now against Leo Chanel, who's 260. Cone looks that way. But doesn't have time. He's sacked for the fifth time in the first half. Nick Herbig, the sophomore from Hawaii, with the tackle. Herbig is the guy that they feel like can be the next great outside linebacker. Here he's going to come on the outside, and then he gets back to the inside as Cohn steps up, gets off of the rush, and he's able to get the sack. Herbig is a heck of an athlete, 227 pounds, and a young player at that. Bramblett will put it away from the four. Dean Ingram back deep at the 41. Ingram lets it go over his head, and what a punt all the way down to the Wisconsin nine-yard line. A 73-yard punt for Jay Bramblett. Tomorrow, it's a huge doubleheader on Fox. First, the Bears. Take on Baker Mayfield and the Browns then in America's Game of the Week. Tom Brady leads the Bucks against Matthew Stafford and the Rams. It all kicks off tomorrow on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Check local listings for the game in your area. Justin Fields, 11th overall pick, making his first NFL start for Chicago. Uh, I can't wait to watch him. We were at his first start for Ohio State. He was electric that day. I can't wait to see him on the field. First down, Wisconsin at the nine. Offside with contact. Defense number 56. Five yard penalty. First down. That's Howard Cross. And Cross is having to play today because their starter, Kurt Heinisch, 
isn't available. He's in the concussion protocol. And so they're a little thin there at nose. Howard Cross getting the start. He was a four star player out of New Jersey, St. Joseph's High School. First and five. Garindo. That play strung out, and Garindo goes down. Adi Milola with the tackle. And great detail as well. They ran a little twist. Adam Lola is on the outside, and what does he do? He immediately, Gus, gets his outside arm free because he's the edge player once he twists with the defensive end. Those are the little details of football that make me excited because these guys are clearly being, one, coached well, and then they're giving great effort and attention to detail. Loss of one, second and six at the 13, 128. And counting. And Wisconsin calls a timeout. 10-3, Notre Dame. Closing moments of the first half. State Farm Halftime Show. Rob Stone, Brady Quinn, Reggie Bush, Matty Fresh, and Big Game Bob are standing by right here from Soldier Field. Wisconsin's trying to get into the half, and Notre Dame has that one timeout left. So if they can't convert here, Notre Dame's going to get a shot. I don't know how great it would be. I see Wisconsin just in no hurry right now, draining all the clock that they possibly can. Third down and two. Wisconsin 0 for 5 on third down conversions today. Wisconsin likely take this all the way down and take their last time out. All right, final time out of the first half of the Badgers. Notre Dame. Third down and two for Wisconsin. Fumbles the snap and may have fumbled it again. I'm not sure. It's gravel on the ground. Who's got it? Looks like Ferguson may be laying on the football. I mean, he definitely fumbled it twice. The snap was dropped. Then he picked it up, controlled it when he was hit. It hit the ground again, but I believe Ferguson was the one that came out with it, and he was. Oh, my goodness. I mean... Their third and final timeout of the half. It's going to be a 30 second timeout. Wisconsin fails to get the third down conversion. Now 0 for 6 on conversions. But that was a huge break. I mean, Ferguson diving on that ball is enormous there. That's absolutely points on the board scenario. Notre Dame was going to have then a couple of shots at the end zone. They would already have been in field goal range, and Ferguson was able to jump on that ball. And now they get to punt it away. You know, Graham's, Graham Mertz has got to clean up that ball handling and footwork. It's something that has plagued them against Penn State, Eastern Michigan, and now found its way into this ball game as well. Gunovic punting inside his own five. Kyron Williams at the 36. And it bounces out of bounds inside the 30. A 55-yard punt. Today, Coach Kelly and Chris, along with their staff, are joining thousands of coaches who are uniting to support the Coach to Cure MD program. The coaches are wearing patches on their sleeves to raise awareness and funding for Duchenne muscular dystrophy. You can contribute by texting CURE to 501-501 to donate $25 or visit coach to curemd.org to make a donation. And the Irish will take a knee and head into the locker room with a 10 to 3 lead. Jack Cohn leading the way for Notre Dame against his former team. Don't forget, after the break, join Rob Stone and the guys with the State Farm Halftime Show right here from Soldier Field in Chicago.
sponsored by AT&T Business. Perfect day here in Chicago. As we head to the second half, Notre Dame ranked 12th on top of 18th ranked Wisconsin, 10 to 3. Gus Johnson, along with Joel Klatt, 10-3 score, yep. just as we expected. <laughs> well, we thought it would be low scoring, right? And the two really good defenses. But I thought it was really the play of Jack Cohn that sparked Notre Dame. After the turnover, it was Jack Cohn with a great pass deep. Let's look at our second half connection brought to you by AT&T Business, keeping your business connected with AT&T 5G. They get the pick, and then Cohn delivers down the field. This was his best throw of the first half. Beautiful to Kevin Austin. They get the touchdown to go up 10-3. Wisconsin, on the other hand, they weren't effective on offense. Stepped on fourth down. This is the interception I was talking about. Terrific job stepping in front of the slant pass. Even the sloppiness at the end of the half with the fumble that they got fortunate that Ferguson dove on. This offense has got to get going. Only 88 yards in the first half. 88. Zero of six on third down. Coach Stoops referenced their lack of third down conversion. It's got to get better. They've got to start running the ball and make life easier on their quarterback, Grand Mertz, who just did not have a good first half. Look at that time of possession, 20 minutes to 10. And normally that's the exact opposite for Wisconsin. They're a team that routinely averages over 36, 37 minutes of time of possession. It's almost like Wisconsin is getting Wisconsin by Notre Dame, you know, and Notre Dame with that great plan offensively. They came out throwing the ball, cone 25 attempts. I think it's going to have to be more of the same for them in the second half. Badgers will get the ball to start the second half. Devin Chandler is the deep man. Jonathan Dora, who hit a 51-yard field goal in the first half, one yard short of his career long, will send it away. Missed a 41-yard. First points given up by Wisconsin in the first half this season. the run box. Force Graham Mertz to beat him. And see if he can come throw the ball in the second half. So the second half underway. That one into the end zone for a touchback. So Graham Mertz struggled in the first half. We'll talk about that in a moment. Let's go downstairs to Jenny Tatt. Gus, Joel, I think you probably expected this from Coach Chris. Third down conversions. Yeah, they're crucial. They're everything right now. He also pointed out how important it is to get the run game going. And this is about playing consistent football. At times, we were missing that. And we knew as a team this would be a four-quarter game. Got to keep it going. Brian Kelly was complimentary of his defense. He said, I like what they're doing. Tackling well, getting it down. It's Wisconsin, Notre Dame. This one isn't going to be easy, guys. start offense number 84 five yard penalty first down it's jake ferguson rhythm is such an elusive thing for an offense and it's, I mean, it's easy to spot when they don't have a rhythm and that's clearly where wisconsin is right now small mistakes by veteran players quarterbacks got to play more detailed do the little things right graham mertz 5 of 13 71 yards in the first half, no touchdowns, one interception. Here's Mertz rolling out of the pocket underneath. Ferguson with the catch, and he'll pick up some nice yards after the catch, crossing the 30 to the 31. J.D. Bertrand with the tackle, and it's a gain of 11. You know, this Notre Dame defense, there's a lot going on. You know, sometimes they play three defensive linemen. Sometimes they play four defensive linemen. And I think that Wisconsin needs to get into a game where they're going to get big and bunch up in order to throw the ball and then get wide and spread out like this in order to try to run the football. Second down and four, Malusi. And Malusi picks up the first down. So Coach Stoops and... Well, you, Coach Dukes, Joel, echoed what Coach Chris had to say in terms of running the football and doing a much better job on third down. 0 for 6 
for Wisconsin in that first half. Well, the way that you get into more advantageous third down positions is by running the ball, and then that also creates some passing game for you via the play action. First down. Mertz, play action fake. Mertz delivers down the field, incomplete. Danny Davis is receiver. Davis looked to be open. And again, a, a, an open wide receiver, and that ball doesn't have to be thrown as far on the line because Davis had out leveraged the defender. If that ball gets thrown outside the hash marks and you can lead him that direction across the field, you're probably going to have a huge completion. Second down and 10. Malusi and Malusi grabbed from behind, but his forward momentum gets him across the line of scrimmage and will pick up a first down. In TA. Iron Tabaiola Amosa chasing him down. Now another one of these obvious situations here. Third and eight. Mertz incomplete on third down and eight. Boot Saturday is sponsored by Progressive Insurance. Save when you bundle auto, home, or motorcycle insurance. And by Wendy's official breakfast of NCAA football. The Fox Bet Super Six app is giving you a last chance to win $1 million of Terry Bradshaw's money. It's free and easy to play. Just correctly pick the outcomes of six NFL games tomorrow. Your chance to win a million dollars. Scan the QR code now. Download the app for free. Jack Cohn has already thrown the ball 25 times. His career high is 35 in the 2019 Rose Bowl for Wisconsin. And in this season's opener against Florida State, he winds up and incomplete for Kevin Austin. Well, you, you wonder like, well, if they maintain the lead, would, would they continue to throw the ball and be pass first? The answer is yes, absolutely, because that's been the way that they have moved the football, have softened the defense, have gotten things going, and they're attacking those one-on-ones on the outside. Second down and 10. Half the 20. Byron Williams running. Nothing. He is gobbled up quickly. Matt Pennington as well as Isaiah Mullins combining on the play. And then for Wisconsin's defense, they've got to know that they have to win those one-on-ones on the outside. They're going to be tested. But then how quickly can they get to Cohen in the pass rush? That pass rush has to has to show up on downs like this. Third down and 11. Cone has been sacked four times. Cone steps up in the pocket. Incomplete. Nobody home. And Notre Dame will punt it away. But Cone was under some major heat. I think if you're Notre Dame, you, you've been sacked four times, but the game plan is still working. I think that you would take some pressure in the second half as long as you're able to still throw the ball effectively like they were early in this game. Notre Dame with their fourth three and out today. Bramblett sends it away to Ingram. Ingram from the 38. And Ingram crosses the 40. We push the pile forward. 50-yard punt, six-yard return. Jim Leonard was a heck of a player in the National Football League. He still got up, folks. Then he's a defensive coordinator. Ah, no ball security, though. Look at that. <laughs>
July 24th, Gus returned to Detroit, where he played youth football for the West Side Cubs. My man, you donated new equipment in collaboration with Tough, the Uniform Funding Foundation. The kids got brand new uniform, shoulder pads, book pads, scoreboard, among other things. Tough team was led by University of Notre Dame fifth-year senior Adam Shibley, a linebacker, and other Michigan football players, Jess Spate, Joel Hunford, and Jake Thaw. And look at this run, Malusi! Malusi down the sideline! And he'll get all the way to the 20-yard line. Best offensive play of the day for Wisconsin. It's a gain of 35. Thank you, partner. We had a great day. Adam Shibley from Notre Dame. You, you, you won't find a better kid. They you won't find a better run here. Well, I was just going to say they were inspired, Gus, by you going back to the West Side Cubs right there. And finally, Wisconsin gets loose there in the run game. Colors are red and white. First, that's right. Two. That's right. At the 21. False start. Offense. Number 75. Five-yard penalty. First down. The small mistakes, they'll keep mounting for Wisconsin, and they just make life harder for themselves against a defense that is playing incredibly well. First down and 15 at the 26. Mertz underneath. Nice throw. Great catch. First down. Kendrick Pryor. I thought that was his best throw of the day so far. He's going to have an in-breaking route from this right side. But watch as he drops back from under center and he plants that fifth foot, that fifth step in the ground and boom, he delivers it on time and on target and on the frame of the wide receiver. That was Absolutely his best throw of the day. Everything about that was exactly right from Graham Mertz. First down and 10 at the 11. Malusi in the backfield. Pryor in motion. The pitch. Malusi downhill running. And he'll catch inside the 10. Three-yard gain. Botello with a tackle. Yeah, they just have not been able to get the ball to Jake Ferguson at, at all, really, today. One catch, 11 yards. This is when he becomes so much of a weapon, is in the red zone and inside the 10-yard line. And this is where Wisconsin overall has really struggled this year. Ten possessions, only four touchdowns. That's 40% touchdown percentage. That's 120 in the FBS. They've got to punch this in. Second down and seven. Birds looking, fires underneath, touchdown Wisconsin! And that's the first touchdown pass of the season for Graham Mertz. Kendrick Pryor. What you're gonna get is kind of some clear outs here and then an under route from the outside. And again, Mertz hits his last step in the drop and he fires right away, on time and on target. That's what allows for those few yards of yak, yards after the catch needed for the touchdown. Larsh with the extra point, and we are tied at 10. Wisconsin didn't waste time, four plays, 56 yards. They score in two minutes, 10 up, Notre Dame, Badgers. Today is sponsored by Edward Jones. Life is for living. Let's partner for all of it. And some smiles on the faces of Badger fans here. I'm sure this young man must have felt good. He finally get throws his first touchdown pass of the season. Graham Mertz. You know, I, I know it sounds like coach speak, but he just did what he was coached to do. The ball was out right when he hit his last step. Those are the details. You hear me say details a lot? What, what are the details? Well, when you got a five-step and firm drop and you're hitting a slant, that means throw it on your fifth step. Hit the frame of the wide receiver. Those are the notes you would write down in your playbook. I don't know if they got playbooks anymore. Probably on the <laughs> iPad, right? <laughs> the iPad, but right. those are the notes and details. And then he fought in that series. 
Thus, he played detailed football. So let's see how Jack Cohn and the Notre Dame offense responds. 10-10. Van Dyke. Tonight, two great college football games go back-to-back -back on FS1. First, Nebraska faces 20th-ranked Michigan State at 7th. Then the Pac-12 lights up tonight as Oregon State takes on USC at 10.30 Eastern. You can catch all the action on FS1 and the Fox Sports app. USC uh, releasing their head coach, Clay Helton. Very good man, folks. Now they will be in search of a new head coach and the names that are being thrown around. Mario Cristobal at Oregon, James Franklin at Penn State, and recently I heard Deion Sanders from Jackson State. Cone sacked again. Number five. Wow. Sanborn. Herbig. In the backfield. And what's so great about the Wisconsin defense is that you only are going to get four rushers. Right? So you're going to get four rushers with the blitz, but they only bring four. Jim Leonard does a great job of disguising the pressure. Thus, they move late. And so they've got coverage behind it. It looks like a brick blitz, but they're only bringing four. Second down and 15. Wisconsin came into this game with four sacks in two games. Cone. Incomplete. Brings up third and long. This is exactly what Wisconsin wants to do is get the ball back for an offense that finally established rhythm. Jim Leonard knows that third and 15 going a longer yardage. You're probably going to see more coverage from him. I'd be surprised if he rushes more than four. Maybe just a three-man rush here. Try to allow this ball to come out short and rally up and tackle. Third down, 15 at the 20. And a whistle. Ball start against Notre Dame. Start offense number 75. Uh, Colonel B, third down. This is cut somewhat 50-50. Notre Dame in the Wisconsin fan end. So this is as noisy as it can get for them in a neutral side affair. Third and 20. short of the first down and Notre Dame will have to punt it away. Cone limps off the field. That sack that he took, it looked like he got twisted around on that sack in the previous down. And we'll see if he's going to be healthy and their quarterback depth is not great. Brian Kelly's back up normally. The guy who's played a lot of football in the first couple of weeks. Tyler Buckner, he's not really available with a tight hamstring. Three straight three and outs for the Notre Dame offense and scoring the touchdown in the first half. Bramley from his six gets it away. Jack Dunn backs it up and lets it take a bounce. And it will be downed inside the 30. 50 yard punt. The Wisconsin defense getting after it. They twisted up their brother Jack Cohn. No problem there. 10 up. Now time for our celebration moment, sponsored by Allstate. Who's going to celebrate today? The celebration here in the second half has been Wisconsin after Graham Mertz finally gets that touchdown pass that has been elusive so far this season. Mertz celebrating on that last series. Mertz starting first down at his own 30-yard line. Drops back on first down, winds up, and incomplete. Danny Davis, the target. Well, they, they popped that big run, and that's really what got them started on that last series. They've been trying to take some shots at the one-on-one -on -one matchups that they have. It's a sense that 
Malusi in that run game, maybe even a guy like Isaac Arendo. Gonna have to get things going. Kroger is in the backfield now, number eight. Second and ten. Berger trying to get downhill, and he does. Picks up seven, maybe eight on the play. Bertrand with the tackle. Because those are important runs. Really successful. Not just to get you to third and short, but also to keep the defense honest when you go to those hard run fakes. You get the eyes and the safety of the uh, safeties and linebackers into the backfield, and you can create for guys like Jake Ferguson, 84, off of those fakes. But can Wisconsin convert on third down? They're 0 for 7. They need two yards. Dorendo checks in at running back. Here's Maruts and it batted down. Incomplete. Bo Bauer. What a play. Great play. He's on the blitz. Here comes Bauer. He's just going to run right up the field. They're trying to get a piece of him with the center, Joe Tipman, but he gets through and bats that ball down. It was going to be open, too. He had his wide receiver wide open if he can get that pass off, but Bo, Bo Bauer says no, no, no. Bo Bauer with his best Karch Karai impersonation. Oh, that's right. Congratulations to Karch Karai, head coach of the women's volleyball team that won a gold medal in this year's Olympics. They've got one of the best to ever do it. Brunovic, Williams comes up, wants to take a bounce. And Brunovic doing a nice job today in field position. Down at the 11, a 51-yard punt. All right, Gus. Well, we're going to see what Notre Dame is made of. Jack Cohn now, he is leaving the field and heading up the tunnel. Their normal backup, Tyler Buckner, the freshman, not available with a hamstring issue. So this will be Drew Pine, number 10, second-year player, a four-star recruit out of New Canaan, Connecticut. He played in four games last season, only attempted three passes, yet to play a snap this season until right now, second half of a 10-10 game in a ranked matchup. Wow. So Drew Pine. In a quarterback, first down. From the 16, he'll hand it off. Williams crashing forward. And let's show you how Jack Cohn got hurt. Got rolled up right here. Well, remember that that last sack he took on the last set of downs. Herbig lands on that left foot, and it's just rolled up underneath him. And you can see him wincing in pain as they take him down to the ground. Seven-yard pickup, second and three. Pine will throw it. Pine rolls out, looking. Pine across the body. Caught. Davis, nice run after the catch. Improvisation by Drew Pine. <laughs> I guarantee his heart rate is somewhere in the 165 range right now. And he gets out of the pocket, wasn't really flushed, but he decides to leave the pocket and then stays alive. Nice job finding his wide receiver, and now Notre Dame on the move. That's a 15-yard game. First down at the 38. Pine. Sideline. Caught. Woo! Drew Pine. <laughs> He's coming in the game, slinging it. Let's go. I'm not nervous. This is my chance. This is awesome to watch. Watch him hang in the pocket as well. Again, right, the nerves have got to be crazy. He's in there against the pass rush. It's a little behind the wide receiver. Who cares? Avery Davis makes the adjustment, and here they are across the 50. First two passes, a gain of 15. Now a gain of 17. First and 10 at the 45. Pine hands it off. Williams hits the corner. Forward, crossing the 40. Jack Sandberg 
tripped him up, but that's a six-yard pickup. And so important to stay on schedule with a young quarterback that's just getting his feet wet. What does that mean? I hear that a lot. Okay, so stay on schedule means you got to stay in second and, and four, second and five, because then the entire playbook is at your disposal. You can run it, you can pass it. It's not an obvious passing situation. So staying within the schedule of the set of downs. Second and four. Pine lost it up the sideline. Incomplete. Kevin Austin, the intended receiver, but once again, Fayon Hicks. He's right there in coverage, low contact, gets away with it, goes up at the catch point against a much taller player. Kevin Austin, 6'2", Fayon Hicks, only 5'10", but defending him well there on the edge. Fayon Hicks has played well. The third time he's broken up a pass today. Third down and four. Can Pine continue to move the chains? In for Jack Cohn. Tyler Buckner, the number two quarterback with a hammy. Out. Third down. Here's Pine looking with time. Guns it incomplete. Joe Wilkins had it broken up by Fayon Hicks. I'll tell you, Fayon Hicks, this is such good coverage. Now, listen. He probably gets away with a grab here, but watch the stickiness of the man coverage right there Definitely gets away with a little grab and then comes back over the top and gets that left hand into the catch point Brilliant play from Fallon Hicks the senior from Miami the Notre Dame will have to punt it away Jay Bramlett Wait a minute Looks like they may be going for Fourth down and four Necessarily a bad thing. It'll give Jay Bramlett a little extra room to pin him deep. Drew Pine, though, should gain a little bit of confidence about his first series as the quarterback this year. Bramlett back at the 41. Ingram. And it's been caught at the seven. Tomorrow, it's a huge doubleheader on Fox. First, the Bears take on Baker Mayfield and the Browns. Then, in America's Game of the Week, Tom Brady leads the Bucks against Matthew Stafford and the Rams. It all kicks off tomorrow on Fox at the Fox Sports app. Check local listings for the game in your area. That should be a great game, Bucks. Rams. Can't wait for that one. Brady and Stafford. I'm also excited to listen to you. Hey, America. Gus Johnson is doing some work recently. <laughs> so it's two games last week, and you did amazing Thank with you. Akeem on that Cardinals game. It was fun to watch, and I can't wait to watch this week. You go down, say hello to Urban. Yes, yes I will. You. Yes, I will. We love him. And he's looking for his first win of the season. First and ten at the seven-yard line for Graham Mertz in Wisconsin. Malusi. And he's lucky if he gets back to the line of scrimmage. Riley Mills, Drew White for Notre Dame. This is a really important series for Notre Dame's defense. And the reason is is because you've got a third-string quarterback, basically, now as your quarterback. And you're also playing with a third-string left tackle. You're likely not going to drive the length of the field with that combination. So you've got to get your offense great field position. And it starts with a stop, if you can get it. When the opposing offense is backed up inside their own 10-yard line. Second down and 10 at the 7. Mert sprints out, throws. Incomplete. Short. Pryor couldn't get there in time, and that'll bring up third and long. And on third downs today, Wisconsin 0 for 8. And it's because Notre Dame has done a great job against Jake Ferguson, the tight end. They've gotten pressure on Mertz, and they've defended well on the edges. Remember, excellent pass rushers, and they're aggressive as well with their linebackers in the blitz game. This time, Wisconsin in the Notre Dame end. 
It's going to be loud for Mertz in the offense. Third and ten at the seven. Garendo checks in at running back. Mertz. Screen. Garendo. And he'll cross the ten and get up to around the 14, but not enough. Clarence Lewis with the tackle. Well, they set the house right up the gut. A couple of blitzers right up the middle in Graham Mertz's face. And then they dropped the defensive end out, Justin Adami Lola. And he fell right into the screen and stopped it before it could get going. And another chance for backup quarterback Drew Pine. Who, who saw this coming, partner? This is the beauty of football. You never know. You're one snap away from being in the game. Bunovich, end over end kick. Williams fields it at the 41. And across midfield. And be downed inside Wisconsin territory by Noah Burks. 46 yard punt and 11 yard return. Notre Dame has a rich history of successful head coaches. Era Parsegian won 95 games, fourth most in school history. Lou Holtz ended his career with 100 wins, good for third most all time. And last week, Brian Kelly tied the legend Newt Rockney at 105 career wins at Notre Dame. One more win, and he becomes the all time winningest coach in Notre Dame history. And right now, it's 10 10. Pine hit as he throws. Loose ball. And Wisconsin has it. Johnson with the stick. Jack Sanborn with the recovery. And he's working against that left tackle, the third stringer, Tosh Baker. And he just takes him, he jams him in the chest with his right arm, gets some separation, and then he's to the quarterback on the inside. Pine had no chance, would never have accounted for him in protection. And is trying to get the ball out to the right as Johnson comes up with the biggest defensive play for Wisconsin of the day. And that's what they'll be looking at is it making sure that they controlled the Sanborn before any part of him hit that sideline. Rodas Johnson dislodging the football. So now each team with the turnover. As Wisconsin takes over at the Notre Dame 39. Gosh, it feels like a time to take a shot. Just the momentum, the feeling, the energy. It could be time with how aggressive Notre Dame's defense is against the run. Might be time to try to go over the top. First down and 10 at the 39. Mertz dropping back. Mertz scrambling. And whizzes this one out of bounds. Notre Dame fans want to hold, and I think I agree with them. Logan Bruss, the right tackle, had a hold of Jordan Botello, the defensive end number 12. This is on your right side. You're going to see Bruss number 60, and he's got a hold. And as Mertz leaves, he just continues to hold him, and Botello is right there on that side. Love these kind of games, Carter. I do too. Defensive battles. Stars on the field. Second down and 10. And the flag. Malusi. Foskey. With first contact. I think Notre Dame might have lined up offside. Offside. Defense. Number 57. Lined up in the neutral zone. Clearly in the neutral zone. Boy, any yardage. That's what the other part of what I love about defensive battles is that every little thing is, is big. They're like even that. You go from second and obvious, right? Second and ten to now second and five. All those little mistakes become big in these type of games. Look at the turn of the odds, almost even. Second and five. Here's the pitch. Malusi. 
Lucy goes down short of the first down marker. At the 30, Jack Kaiser stops him. You know, I know everyone makes a big thing about the red zone, right, being inside the 20. But in reality for an offense at this level, you're in scoring territory now because you're within field goal range. So the level of detail that you've got to play with and execute with becomes even heightened, in particular on third down. Third down and one. Wisconsin 0 for 9 on third down conversions. Inside handoff to Chanel, and they get it. So if you're looking at your bingo squares and you thought that the first third down conversion of the game was going to be John Chanel in the third quarter, you win. Good, good pitch. Good push from that offensive line there. That's a play that they like to go to in short yard situations, that little fullback dive. First down and 10 of the Notre Dame, 27. Chanel goes in motion. Mertz to the sideline and caught beautiful grab by Danny Davis. Ooh, that ball was was high and it looked like Davis was going to have a really hard time getting his foot down. And he's on the sideline. He's in the air and then just taps that right toe. Boy, that was close. What awareness from Davis there to get that foot down. Second and two at the 19. Here's the pitch. Belusi with a first down. As he falls forward to the 10. Kyle Hamilton with the tackle. A nine-yard run. Now that Wisconsin offensive line starting to move people. Finally starting to move people. Remember the depth is being affected by Notre Dame. They're starting nose tackle. Kurt Heinis not in this game. So they may be starting to wear down a bit with that big offensive line leaning on them. First down and goal at the 10. Malusi again. This time he'll go nowhere. Beautiful job by Drew White. And that may take us to the end of the third quarter. And that's going to be the end of the third quarter. Game tied at 10, but Badgers knocking on the door. Jump around.
Notre Dame is going with man coverage. They're putting their All-American Kyle Hamilton on the great tight end Jake Ferguson from Wisconsin. That means there's one-on-one matchups on the outside. I think that's where they're going to have to go. This is going to have to be Mertz or one of those outside receivers trying to make a play against the corners for Notre Dame. Cam Hart and Clarence Lewis. Third down and goal at the nine. Will Mertz throw it? Mertz underneath incomplete. No flag on the play. Kendrick Pryor on the slam covered nicely by Cam Hart. And here comes the field goal unit. Colin Larsh. Larsh has got to make sure he gets this ball up. Here's the last play. Mertz is looking for that inside breaking route. Same exact concept that they threw the touchdown pass on their previous series in the third quarter. This one just out in front. Remember, Penn State blocked the field goal of about this yardage in their first game. 27 yarder. Larsh good from 37 yards in his only attempt today. Two for two. Wisconsin goes in front. 13 to 10 as we start the fourth. Big Noon Saturday is sponsored by AT&T Business. Soldier Field in Chicago. 13 to 10 Wisconsin as we start the fourth. Let's go down to Jenny. I think it's a good sign. Jack Cohn has his helmet on. He had it on when he left that x-ray area at Soldier Field. Extreme focus walking back out here. No sign of any limping. But the only way, Gus, I can describe the O-line all day, it has been a roller coaster. Jeff Quinn, the coach, has been calling his guys out throughout the day at times, trying to motivate. Brian Kelly has gotten involved. They need more, and especially more. They need to protect their quarterback as we wait and see if Jack Cohn will give it a go. Helmet on. We'll see. Van Dyke kicks it off. Picked up. Tyree. Here's Tyree with the lane. Tyree! Whoa! Can he get there? Tyree the 30. 20. 10. Touchdown. Notre Dame. Woo! 98. Big ones. Whoa! And then he's gone. Great move. He gets away from the kicker. And then it's all about speed. He turns it on and runs away from the Badgers into the end zone. Electric. That's the way the Rocket used to run it. And we saw him on the desk before the game. Extra point. Good. Chris Tyree from Chester, Virginia. His first kick return touchdown in his career the luck of the irish pop it off right now 17 13. today is sponsored by pacific life more than 150 years strong protect what matters most and by under armor the only way is through 17 to 13. chris tyree with a 98 yard kickoff return for a touchdown Folks, I felt like I was watching Rocket Ishmael all over again. Number 25. 25. Wow. Racing down the field. Third lead change today. Two of them in the last 13 seconds. We got a game here in Chicago. Chandler from the five. Chandler up the sideline. High stepping and is hit. Flag on the play. Late hit coming up as Chandler goes out of bounds near the 40. Steps out there, and then when he jumps, he gets the hit. After the play was over, personal foul, late hit out of bounds. 28 of the kicking team. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. First down, 
Wisconsin. I feel I feel bad for Tariq Bracey because I don't think he probably saw that his foot was just out of bounds. There's no way he's going to hear a whistle. So he sees the returner jump out. I don't, you know, no malice in that one. Just kind of an unfortunate circumstance there for the Irish. But it gives Wisconsin better field position. Thus, in the back half of that third quarter, that offensive line started to find their rhythm, leaning on that defensive line for Notre Dame that has played so well, but remember they're thin there without their start starting nose tackle. We'll see if they go back to that run game here. First down at the 47. Jalen Berger in at running back. Berger hit in the backfield, flags everywhere. J.D. Bertrand with the hit. Holding offense number 75. Ten-yard penalty, repeat first down. I'll tell you, this is just all-out effort from Jacob Lacey, 54 of Notre Dame. Watch 54 of Notre Dame. He's working against the center. 75 and he's just gonna run as far as fast as he can across that gap and then they kind of get him for the hole dragging Lacey and tripping him down but man that effort was terrific from Lacey first and 20 Mertz underneath caught first down let's quickly check in with Jenny Tad Guys, like you said, Pine in this one after one throw on the sideline. Jack Cohn motioned to his teammates that he was not good, appeared to be emotional on the sideline. He and Pine shared a half embrace, shared some words. What will Pine do? It appears at this point that Jack Cohn's day is done. All right, Jenny, thank you very much. Great report. First down and 15. And Williams reverses. Hops through the hole. Hennigson with the tackle with a six-yard run. Fayon Hicks slow to get up. Number one for Wisconsin. While they tend to him, we we'll step away. Should buy State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. What a game, what a game. Notre Dame and Wisconsin. Twists and turns, ebbs and flows, 12 minutes to go. 17 to 13. Irish, Jack Cohn, starting quarterback for Notre Dame, out. Drew Pine, the third string quarterback, sophomore from New Canaan, Connecticut, in at QB. Second down and nine. Pine looks near side underneath Austin. And he'll get. Noah Burks brings him down. He'll pick up about four. Something about Pine. I love his feet. Looks like he's got quick, choppy steps and quick feet. Something. He does. He does. Sometimes it can look like those guys are, are short. He's a, little, <laughs> he's a little on the shorter side. Murray's pretty short. That's right. He's short. <laughs> Third down and five of the 41. This is this is the down though that, that as a play caller for Notre Dame, I would be a bit nervous. Right. Third string left tackle. Third string quarterback. You know Wisconsin's going to try to get after him here. Pine. Guns it. Sideline and caught for a first down. Kevin Austin. I'll tell you what, the block by Kyron Williams makes the play. Watch Kyron Williams step up and block Jack Sanborn. I mean, that is a major league collision, and it allows Pine to just stand there, wait for a beat, and then get the ball out to Austin. That was some great stuff right there. First down and 10 at the 34. And a timeout. Notre Dame. Back after this. Man, as a coach, I play not my 11 best, but my best 11. Show me a good and gracious loser, and I'll show you a failure. One loss is good for the soul. Too many losses, not good for the coach. <laughs>
Ryan Kelly is 10 minutes and 45 seconds away from passing Newt Rockney as the all-time winningest coach in Notre Dame history. And can he do it with a third-string quarterback? The clock thickens. Pine. Fires! Mayer was a catch, and he's down at the 10. Michael Mayer. They do a great job of attacking space. This is a space that they want to get Mayer in as he gets over the top of the linebacker. Look at that ball again, layered over the linebacker in front of the deep players. Terrific ball from Drew Pine. 22-yard reception, first down Notre Dame. And they hand it off. Williams breaking tackles and finally dropped for a loss. Scott Nelson. And that's a loss of four. But let's tell you a little bit about Pine. As a senior at New Canaan High School in 2019, he threw for 2,000 yards with 24 touchdowns and seven picks. Also ran for eight touchdowns. Two-time Connecticut State champ. The number one player coming out of the state by two organizations. You know how I know he was a great high school player? How? He plays at Notre Dame. <laughs> exactly. Second and 14. There's another great quarterback out of Connecticut, Steve Young. Here's Pine over the middle. They do a great job of getting his eyes to the left side. Look at his eyes go to the left side. That's what opens up this space behind the linebacker. As the linebacker blitzes, he waits for a moment and gets Kevin Austin. How many big catches has Kevin Austin had today? We told you early he had to have a big day if they were going to beat Wisconsin, and he has had a big day. Austin, six catches, 76 yards, two touchdowns, extra point up and good. for five on the drive including this touchdown pass Notre Dame on top of the Badgers about Drew Pine Drew Pine Entered New Canaan High School. This is coming out of eighth grade. Wait a minute, that's Brady Quinn. <laughs> He's part of the media, not allowed to root on the sideline. <laughs> but Pine entered New Canaan High School with offers on the table. This is coming out of eighth grade. From Alabama, Florida State, Penn State, South Alabama, and South Carolina, all before he threw a pass in high school. Pine, 6 of 8, 81 yards, a touchdown. He's thrown more than twice as many passes in the last 15 minutes as he did all of last season in four games. And I don't know, partner. Sometimes they say you can't teach it. And on this day, so far, it's got something. You know, and I, I know it sounds so boring, but he's come in and just done the little things well. His eyes go to the correct receiver first. Draws the linebacker out of the zone. He comes back, throws on time. Those little things equal success. Lorendo running straight ahead, 24 to 13. Kaiser with the tackle. So, and Lorendo down, holding his ankle. Struggles to get up. Trying to walk it off, and he won't be able to. This is uncomfortable time for Paul Christ and the Wisconsin ba Badgers. They're just not really made for this. 11-point deficit, fourth quarter, 9-4 T-line. 9-14 remaining in the fourth. Second and nine for Graham Mertz. 
Mertz, near side throw, Paul Pryor, and he'll get out of bounds. Looks like he may have the first down. Pryor's been good today. That's his fifth catch. Now he's got over 50 yards. But again, I was just talking about this is the uncomfortable zone for Wisconsin. They're just not built to sit here and throw the ball. I know people thought that that's what they were going to be able to do when Graham Mertz played so well against Illinois in the first game last year, but it's just never materialized. First down at the 37. Mertz lobs it up and incomplete. Malusi just couldn't bring it down, thrown a tad high. Well, what ends up happening in, in moments like this, you get inside of nine minutes, you're down 11, you know that it's a two-possession game. As a quarterback, you can start to force the issue. I can tell you this firsthand, when you got great secondary players out there, this is their opportunity. And a guy like Kyle Hamilton will likely have an opportunity at an interception here in the next eight minutes and 44 seconds because of his constant pressing. Second and ten, Malusi. First down, I believe. Bertrand with the tackle. Good run from Malusi there. And timely as they earn a fresh set of downs. And eternity remaining in this game. 24 to 13. First and ten at the 47. Mertz. Over the middle. Beautiful throw. And nice catch. Danny Davis. And he'll gain 19 yards. Really good protection, first of all, from the offensive line. But then as the play develops, he's looking left. And he's got a hole in the defense right there. And then they can exploit that as he just allows the linebacker to move over. And he's able to get his wide receiver to come in and just loop around for the catch. Danny Davis secures it. First down at the Notre Dame, 34. Here comes a blitz. Mertz. Far side. Incomplete. And the prior tried to... One hand. That's going around, ladies. Ooh, DJ Graham, you're talking about? Ooh. Oklahoma. Ask me. You know, I had a bunch of people ask me, like, why didn't you say anything after it? And I was like, because after that play, I couldn't say, he should have batted it down. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been the Debbie Downer of all Debbie Downers. Man. Second down and 10 at the 34. Mertz in this game has thrown his first touchdown pass of the season. Mertz. Incomplete. Prior the target. Nice defense by Cam Hart covering. Cam Hart's had a nice game. Remember, he had the interception that really got them going offensively. They ended up going down and scoring a touchdown. Prior limping. We'll go to the sideline. Third down and 10 of the 34. Wisconsin 1 for 12 on third down conversions today. And they've brought pressure in this scenario. Would you think this is four down territory? Well, it just depends on where you get to. Probably if you gain any positive yards. Third and long. Mertz backing up off his back foot. Incomplete. Kyle Hamilton with pressure, and that brings up fourth down and long. And, you know, I, I think at this point you would probably, I know that's a long field goal attempt, 52 yards, but a field goal at least makes it a one possession game. If you don't get it, you go for it on fourth down and you don't get it, you, I mean, that's that's monumental to try to come back for. So as low percentage as a 50 plus yarder is, I think you got to go for it here. Colin Larsh's career long is 44 yards at Illinois in 2019. This one from 52. And he missed it. Twenty-four thirteen.
Pacific Life game summary sponsored by Pacific Life. More than 150 years strong. Protect what matters most. Well, here was that interception I referenced earlier. Cam Hart gets the pick. Notre Dame turns it into a score. Beautiful catch by Austin. Then it was Drew Pine. He's six of eight. Finds Austin again. And then it gives a little, what is that, the Irishman walk, a little Conor McGregor right there. Luck of the Irish, Drew Pine comes in and he's settled this offense down. He's been very good in obvious passing situations, and he's been accurate down the field, Gus. Jack Cohn out with an injury. Looks like a lower body injury. Brings in Drew Pine. The third string quarterback, first down, and they'll hand it off. Let's tell you something about Pine. If you're a Pine, you play football. Pine's great-grandfather, George Pine Jr., was an All-American at Holy Cross before playing in the NFL for the Providence Steamrollers in 1931. Pine's grandfather, George Pine III, played in 1965 for the Boston Patriots of the AFL. Pine's uncle, Jim Pine, was the unanimous All-American guard out of Virginia Tech and is considered one of the best to ever play at the school. Jim Pine played in the NFL for nine seasons with Tampa, Detroit, Cleveland, and Philly. Pine's father, George, was an all-Ivy and all-New England during his time at Brown. And now the baby boy, Drew Pine, second and six. start offense number 87 five yard penalty second down and for more on drew pine let's go downstairs to jenny well get this guys i know you noticed he's wearing number 10 so i of course had to go over to brady quinn and ask him about it he said oh yeah i know he wears number 10 because of me so i said brady tell me more he said there was a pre-existing relationship there between their families so he does know him knows him well he knew all about the 10 and how cool that he's getting this opportunity guys in front of brady quinn today no doubt about it nobody saw it coming Brady Quinn and the entire as usual. I don't know, man. I think Drew Pine makes that number 10 look good. <laughs> no doubt about it. Second and nine. There's a handoff to Williams. Williams before Priest. The way that defense is playing, Notre Dame. They can play it safe here, you know, in, in a two-possession game. They don't have to throw the ball, force the issue at all. They can just allow all this clock to run. Wisconsin does have all three of their timeouts left, but Brian Kelly does not have to do anything special here to try to move the chains, in particular with the way that defense has played so far today. Third down and seven after 37. Pine in trouble. Pine and he's gobbled up from behind. Jack Sandberg almost took his head off. Actually, a little surprised that they decided to try to throw it there. And I think Drew Pine made the exact right decision, which was unless it was just wide open, don't throw it. You know, let that. They're first of the half. It's be a 30 second timeout. And that's exactly why you force Wisconsin to take one of those timeouts. Drew Pine, Yeoman's work, 24-13 Irish. Thing away from the 19-yard line, Drew Ingram is the deep man for Wisconsin. Ingram signals for the fair catch and has it at the 15. A 51-yard punt. Well, this defense learned a valuable lesson in their first game against Florida State. Marcus Freeman started to play a little softer, both in coverage and in the aggressive style of the defensive front. And, no, and Florida State came back in that ball game. There is a flag on the play here. Far side, 45. Nice punt. Sportsman-like conduct, Notre Dame head coach. It's a 15-yard penalty from the end of the kick. First down, Wisconsin. That 
that's the coach's first unsportsmanlike conduct penalty of the game. Machine Gun Kelly. <laughs> I mean, I, honestly, I didn't see what was going on there. I know Kyle Hamilton was involved in a little something after the play, way behind the play, and I'm sure Brian Kelly, knowing how valuable Kyle Hamilton is, was upset that there wasn't a penalty called on that skirmish. So first down at 29 for the Badgers. Down 24 to 13 in Notre Dame. Mertz. It's caught by Danny Davis. And Davis has had a solid game, 17-yard game. Clarence Lewis with the tackle. You gotta piece this out into two different games, if you will, for Wisconsin because it's two possessions. Set a point where you gotta score by. First down to the 46. Mertz again underneath, intercepted. Cam Hart sideline. Cam Hart out of bounds. Inside the 25, another mistake by the sophomore quarterback, Graham Mertz. Well, they're running this exact same concept. They threw it for a touchdown earlier. They've gone back to it both inside the 10 and on different series. They're going to try to clear out, and they're going to try to bring that outside receiver in. But Cam Hart knew it. He understood that the outside receiver in the Wisconsin offense Offense oftentimes has those in breaking routes the slants the unders and he played the leverage and broke on the ball again Second interception of the day for Graham Mertz He's fumbled today and the turnover woes against ranked teams continue for the young quarterback in Wisconsin now three turnovers here against Notre Dame Cam Hart with two interceptions of his own. First down, Notre Dame. And the handoff to Williams. In a few moments, some of you in Iowa and Texas will be taken to the start of Iowa State Baylor. That game is also available on FS2 and streaming live on the Fox Sports app. The rest of you will get you out there at the immediate conclusion of our game. If you are leaving us but want to watch our game, we are also available on the app. This program is so consistent. I'm so impressed with Brian Kelly, what he's built. This is supposed to be a transitional year for them, in particular because of the youth on the offensive line. And they just are, are gritty. They play detail-oriented. This is not an easy place to have success. Yes, they've got great tradition. I mean great tradition. They've got an amazing fan base. But with the academic standards and, and listen, folks, what they're doing is is really good. I mean, Brian Kelly, I, I feel, is underrated around college football circles. This guy's been to a BCS national championship game. He's been to two playoffs. Everyone's like, well, you know, they don't, they don't win those games. Well, who is winning those games against Bama and Clemson? It's not a unique problem to, no, to Notre Dame, and Brian Kelly has said that at different times. What they have built here is very special, and I admire this program, and I admire what Brian Kelly has been able to do at Notre Dame in his tenure, and now what looks like becoming here in 3 minutes and 20 seconds, Gus, the all-time winningest coach at one of the most storied institutions in the country. No rest for the weary for Notre Dame. After this, they'll take on Cincinnati. And Cincinnati's ranked eighth in the country. But what I like about Brian Kelly and what I like about the Notre Dame program more than anything, they will play anybody, anywhere, in any climate. <laughs> I think I know where going with that. So, SEC can play Notre Dame in November in South Bend. As opposed to always playing games in 50 degree or better weather. That's what I like about the Irish. Here Look is the schedule. Yeah, here. here's that schedule. I mean, that's difficult. They've got, I believe it's six different opponents that are coming off of their off week that then they will have to play. One of those was this Wisconsin team. 
That Cincinnati game is huge. Obviously, USC is always talented. North Carolina with Sam Howell. You wonder now about Jack Cohn's health. Can they get Tyler Buckner, their other quarterback, healthy with his hamstring? I just, you know, they, they've been so consistent and they're so sound. And how about Drew Pine? He comes in there. This is what I was referencing here. They're playing the opponents with bye weeks before, off weeks before. Last year, as a member of the ACC, it was a weird schedule. So two years ago, seven. This year, six. That's kind of the life of the independent. Door into attempt a 37-yarder. He hit a 51-yarder and missed a 41-yarder today. And good. 27-13. With 3-10 remaining in the fourth, and a flag has been thrown. This may be running into the kicker. Likely decline this. Never take points off the board. Running into the kicker, defense, number 19. Penalties have been declined. Field goal is good. 27 to 13, Notre Dame. 310 to go in the fourth. The happy Irish in Chicago. Notre Dame fighting through adversity, losing their starting quarterback, Jack Cohn. They were without their second string quarterback, Tyler Buckner, who has a hamstring injury. And Drew Pine came off the bench with history on the line for that man. Brian Kelly is three minutes and ten seconds away from passing the great Newt Rockman as the all-time winningest coach in Notre Dame history. And this one kicked out of the end zone. And let's take a look at what the quarterbacks have done. Well, we, we build this as the Jack Cone, Graham Mertz kind of showdown, and really the guy who sold the show is Drew Pine, six of eight for 81 yards. I still thought Jack Cone played so well. And, and the, the game plan was going to be for him to have to sit in the pocket amidst that pressure that was going to be immense and make plays. And he did that. He left the game with that injury when he was rolled up on. Pine played great. Mertz continues to struggle in these ranked games, these ranked opponents. And Wisconsin has got to be frustrated with that. First down for Mertz. Floats one. Pryor. Gets out of bounds. First down. Jack Kaiser with the tackle. Well, it, if you're Wisconsin, you're, you're thinking to yourself, okay, I've got a timeout left. If I can score in the next minute, minute 30, maybe I have a shot. Mertz. Out of bounds. And because of that, what Notre Dame needs to do is you put your best player back deep. That's Kyle Hamilton. He's 6'4", 220 pounds. And you just tell him, listen, you be our eraser. Nothing gets, nothing gets past you. Nothing. And so now the most important player for Notre Dame becomes their best player, Kyle Hamilton, in a position where the only thing that can bite you if you're the Irish is some lightning in a bottle style big play that can score right away. Second down and ten. Mertz. Incomplete. And a flag. This one will go on Hamilton. As Jack Dunn was the intended receiver. Well, they've, they've let a lot go. I mean, I mean, I know Fayon Hicks has gotten away with a few grabs from my seat. Pass interference. Defense number 14. Ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. Out. I see that looked like he dove around him. Now, listen, I'm on the far side here. Probably don't have the best angle. Hamilton gets called for that one. First down of the 49. Mertz under pressure. And it's 
caught. Danny Davis, great job of getting that foot down. Well, this is exactly what they needed now. Now they need to get, take a couple more shots, try to get down the seam. Get that ball past the chain so you get that clock stopping here and there. Probably need to get in a no huddle. They're still huddling, but you got to score at that kind of two mark and two minute mark to really have a shot. First down at the 32. Mertz. And intercepted again. Wow. Notre Dame. Hello. Jack Kaiser. 66 yards. Trying to throw the ball late to the far side of the field is never a good recipe. Here's Kaiser on the outside. He's just flying out there to cover that flat route. And he is right there and jumps the route again. These Notre Dame defenders have been so aggressive in the passing lanes. Now three interceptions on the day. Two for Cam Hart. And Kaiser takes it the distance. Extra point up and good. And it looks like Coach Kelly, 213 away, will get his 106th win and pass Newt Rockney. And even though he's about to make history, he knows where he stands with the fighting Irish faithful. Yeah, I can tell you exactly where I sit in Notre Dame history. The coach that won more games that hasn't won a national championship. That's where I'll sit. I mean, I love that answer because he, he knows what this is about for, for the Notre Dame fans. And, you know, he's, he's going to keep swinging and, and trying. But I will tell you, you know what's great about this season specifically? Not just for Notre Dame, but across college football, Gus. For the first time in a while, outside of Alabama, it's hard to tell exactly who the best four teams are. You know, we're spreading out a little parity this year. Ohio State obviously looks vulnerable. Clemson looks vulnerable. As much as those fan bases won't want to hear it, that's good for the sport. But going back to Coach Kelly, think about it. Newt Rodney has held the record at 105 victories for 90 years. 90 years. That's the record Brian Kelly is eclipsing today. National championship or not. Longevity out of all places, Notre Dame. Remarkable. It really is. It really is. He's built he's built a great program. An absolutely great program. And they were shorthanded today. They were without their starting nose tackle. They're with their third string left tackle. They go down to their third string quarterback. And they, they just continue to find a way. And this defense played outstanding. Well, Lucy running it. Brian Kelly, this is his 31st year as a head coach overall. 12 at Notre Dame, 3 at Cincinnati, 3 at Central Michigan, 13 at Grand Valley State. Lifer. Businessman. You know, part of that business... Gus is finding the right staff. And he loses his defensive coordinator to be the head coach at Vandy, Clark Lake, and he gets Marcus Freeman. And, you know, I'll, I'll be honest, there was, I heard from, from some Irish fans after the Florida State game, like, I don't know about this new defensive philosophy. Well, how do you feel today? 13 point, points. You give up only 63 yards rushing to Wisconsin and get the four takeaways. There was a very specific reason Brian Kelly wanted to switch to a Marcus Freeman style of defense. He wanted to create havoc and extra possessions. Get turnovers, sacks, third down stops. Mertz, another interception. Drew White. White with blockers. White cuts it up. White to the end zone. Touchdown, Fires. 47 yards. Freeman knows what he's doing. Partner, these guys look fast on defense and confused.
throws it. All over the place, flying around. All the players, when we talked to them on Thursday, said, we used to play fit ball. Now we play go, go, go on defense, and Brian Kelly gets the green Gatorade bath. Congratulations, Brian Kelly. You're the winningest coach in the history of Notre Dame football. Brian Kelly told our Tom Rinaldi when asked if you won this game, what would you look forward to doing? He said, man, I'm going to drink the nicest bottle of wine <laughs> that the world has ever produced. Folks, the score at halftime is 10-3 Notre Dame. I think what, what we saw today was it was great storylines and drama with the quarterbacks and even the head coach, Brian Kelly. But I think that the biggest thing that came out of today, Gus, was that this defensive philosophy has taken root. And this is a different team. And if they can play this aggressive style of suffocating defense, creating extra chances for their offense, well, then the sky's the limit for this team. Even in what many around Notre Dame would call kind of a rebuilding year because of what's going on up front with their offensive line. How about the quarterback situation? Jack Cohn, do you give Drew Pine a chance? Is it deja vu over again for Jack Cohn? No, and, and the reason is, is because as well as Drew Pine played, the reason Notre Dame was in a position to win this game when Drew Pine came in is because of the, the detail, the efficiency, and the toughness and leadership of Jack Cohn. I, I still think he gives this team the best chance to win, in particular when you couple that with Tyler Buckner potentially getting healthy from that hamstring injury, who can then come in on some series and give the change up with the quarterback run game. And they'll run it conversely. When you look at the Wisconsin sideline, if you're Paul Chris, what do you do with Graham Mertz? Well, he's his coach, too, right? So this is the schedule. We're going to find out next week as Michigan heads up to Madison. And that's a Michigan team that has a tough one against Rutgers, by the way. Rutgers is a real team with Greg Chiano. So we'll see what Michigan has today. We'll, we'll see. I, they're not a ton behind Graham Mertz, but they have got to figure this out. It's just... And Gus, I've shown you some of the film, you know, the small mistakes that, that get made, and they got to figure that out. Brian Kelly makes the walk across the field as Notre Dame defeats Wisconsin. Coach Kelly, the winningest coach in the history of Notre Dame. Congratulations, Coach Kelly. Drew Pine comes off the bench as the third stringer and plays his heart out. And right now, our Jenny Taft is on the field with the history man. Guys, I love what Coach just said to me. It's normally a good sign when you get the Gatorade bath. You know I'm going to ask you about it. Now, the all-time winningest coach in Notre Dame history. What does it mean to you in this moment? Well, obviously, it's been about consistency and having great coaches and great players. Um, but it's about what you saw today, uh, resiliency. Um, you know, it was 10-10. Things didn't look really good in the third quarter. They, they played the jump around. I didn't give you a very good warning. They played the jump around song, and our guys thought it was their fight song. Um, they really, they just play with resiliency and toughness and and it's kind of what our process has been about and the journey is much more important than the wins so um, just blessed to have the opportunity to coach these guys I know you mentioned resiliency it's not easy for Jack Cohn to go down Drew Pine to come in oh, yeah. and do that lead this offense how impressive was he very impressive because like here's the deal right you know he was 
vying for the starting position and you know we bring in a transfer and he kind of wins the job but he never sulks he doesn't put his head down he works every day and now he gets this opportunity to really soak in a great victory it's it's really fun speaking of so good in, do you think rockney ever had anything like this in his oh, years he probably had better suits yeah he was a pretty good um guy that uh, understood the marketing of the game and uh i'm just uh, again i'm not in that category i'm just lucky that i got a chance to coach these kids what kind of wine tonight coach um i think i'm gonna go i might go with uh, one of my favorite um italian wines Masetto. can i join you for that congratulations <laughs> well done enjoy this cheers all right congratulations to coach kelly and the Notre Dame Fighting Irish, huge victory, 41 to 13 over Wisconsin. Irish improved to 4 and 0. Cincinnati for them next week. For the Badgers, they fall to 1 and 2, and they'll have the Michigan Wolverines at home in Madison. Coming up after the break, we'll take you out to Waco, Texas, where Iowa State is taking on the Baylor Bears. Now, who's hot? Who's